Chevy Van, it's been through a lot in the last 25 years. People have even written songs about it. But for 96, Chevrolet has completely reinvented the full-size van. In this issue of Truck Track, we'll take a comprehensive look at the new design, from the rugged full-frame chassis to the all-new interior. The roomiest Chevy full-size van ever. Chevy Van and Chevy Express, all new and all Chevy. In fact, you might say they're fantastic. Strength is the key to any good foundation, and the full-size vans from Chevy are no exception. We'll see that up close in our technical review as we spotlight the steel frame chassis. It's a full-length feature. Truck Track features a conversation with the brand manager for Chevy Van and Chevy Express, John Gaydash. Our behind the bow tie feature full-size philosophy. Our focus on total customer enthusiasm highlights some genuine customer care features available to every Chevy owner that you won't find with competitive vehicles. Some genuine advantages. And Truck Track profiles the Wentzville plant where the full-size van is produced. It's one of the highest quality plants in all of General Motors. This month's event coverage, full-size immersion, the Wentzville way. Finally, breaking news brings you the latest on a Chevy truck launch that's just around the corner, along with the latest product news in the truck market. It's all coming up in this issue of Truck Track. Hi, I'm Lowell Perry. And I'm Eden Cooper. Welcome to Truck Track. Well, it's been a long time in the making, but it was sure worth the wait. The full-size Chevy van and Chevy Express are ready to roll, and their coming out party looks to be quite impressive. Indeed it does. Chevy van and Chevy Express were designed from the inside out to be the strongest, roomiest, best-built Chevy full-size vans ever. They're available in G1500, 2500, and 3500 models, with a base trim level availability for Chevy Van and base or LS trim level for Chevy Express. One of the most noticeable improvements is the benefit of engine forward design. By moving the engine and front axle forward 10 inches, we've increased leg room and enhanced passenger access by making the door openings wider. Lowell, there are significant comfort, convenience, and safety enhancements as well like standard driver and front passenger airbags on the G1500 and 2500 models, and standard four-wheel ABS on all models. Here's a feature you won't find on the Ford or Dodge competitors. Pillar-mounted front passenger safety belt height adjusters slide vertically to add to front passenger comfort. Instrumentation that is very driver-friendly, with large rotary knobs that make it easy to adjust climate controls, even if you're wearing gloves. And notice the seamless appearance of the instrument panel thoughtfully designed with hidden mold separation lines. Dual power outside mirrors with defog feature are available as an option. The defog feature helps keep the mirrors clear in damp weather. Chevy Express features rear seats that slide in tracks, making removal and installation easy. And wheels on the bottom of the seats make it convenient to move them around when they're out of the vehicle. And here's some more proof that Chevy is going to great lengths to satisfy the customer. The full-size vans offer the choice of two wheelbase lengths, 135 and 155 inches. Whatever the needs and applications of your customers, Chevy full-size van was designed to accommodate. And it all starts with the impressive full-frame chassis that the vans are built on. It's the foundation for dependable, long-lasting quality. For more on the full-frame design, Pete met with a GM engineer, an expert on the all-new G-Van frame. Thank you, Eden. I'm in Modern Engineering where I've been checking out the full-length steel chassis frame on the new Chevy Express and Chevy Van. You see, today I'm going to frame things in a different perspective. And to help me do that is John Roby. He's the man behind the full-frame design that's become the foundation of today's full-size vans. 
John, I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Now, why don't you give us a brief overview of this full-size frame we're looking at? Well, if you're used to a sea truck, you're used to a frame very much like ours. It's full length. You start at the front, it looks just like a sea truck frame. It's got a boxed front edge. It has an independent front suspension using some of the same components as the sea truck. As we work our way back, though, things get a little bit different. From here rearward, a sea truck becomes an open section frame riveted together. Ours is fully boxed all the way back. The cross members are welded to the main ladder structure. The brackets for the suspension are welded to the main ladder structure. So let me ask you then, how is this design different from its predecessor? Well, the G-Van was a unit body where these main structural members are all welded right to the floor. Ours, we have the full ladder welded together very stiffly, but we're isolated from the body by these very soft shear body mounts for the best possible ride quality. Right. Well, you mentioned this is a fully boxed frame, so what benefit do we get from this? It's two kinds of things. One is stiffness for ride quality and for the handling quality. Some of our customers want a very car-like performance mm -hmm. from the vehicle. The other is that the torsional stiffness gives us a torsional strength also that helps us carry very heavy loads over rough roads without a lot of body itching, and it makes the whole vehicle more durable. Well, John, let me ask you, do you think upfitters will find this design easy to work with? I think it's much more forgiving than a welded-in body structure would be. Mm -hmm. They have some room to work between the body and the frame. I see. And the frame's very meaty. It can take a little bit of local distortion. So really what you're saying is that this is the ideal design for both the Chevy Express and Chevy van. We think so, Pete. So you couldn't have said it any better, John. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time. Lowell, Eden, back to you. Everyone we've talked to has been pretty excited about the new vans and, of course, inquired about their availability. Here's what we know so far. Rollout of both the cargo and RV cutaway took place in February, along with 6.5 liter turbo diesel availability. In late February, the 177 inch wheelbase began rolling off the lines, followed by the commercial cut in March. And in June, the passenger and extended vans are scheduled for rollout. Moving on, Pete Toko has prepared his own unique kind of product review for Chevy Express and Chevy Van. Let's see what he has. Thanks, Lowell and Eden. I'm at Eastern Market in downtown Detroit. It's the center of activity for restaurant and grocery wholesalers. Since the turn of the century, this place has become home to fish markets, meat packing houses, produce, anything to do with the restaurant and grocery business. These people know all about full-size vans because most of them rely on transportation for their business livelihood. Top to bottom, these things are loaded with big features and little touches that make ownership and use more enjoyable. I'm going to get right to it because I've got a full-size review to do today. What you see behind me is the G3500 Chevy van and a Ford Econoline E250 Supercargo XL van. I couldn't get my hands on a G2500 Chevy van. That's actually what I'll be comparing to the Econo line. Most of the features on this G3500 are common to a G2500, so I thought it would be an able stand-in. The reason I want to compare the G2500 Chevy van and this Econo line is because they generally are among the best sellers in this segment. One thing to remember during my comparison, the Chevy is equipped with preferred equipment group 1SB and the chrome appearance package. The Econo line is equipped with Ford's PEP 750A and some optional equipment. Now, what does all this mean? These two vehicles pretty much have the same equipment. So, what's the difference? I'll show you what's the difference. Even when you're comparing apples to apples, one is going to taste sweeter. Let's take a look. I'm going to show you some of the key features that your customers are sure to love. And speaking of key, check this out, a two-sided key. Convenient for people who aren't always sure which way is up. This plastic protective molding prevents key scratches usually found around the keyhole, and it makes it easier to guide the key into the keyhole. No more fumbling at night or when you have your hands full. Econoline has this key plate which really doesn't offer any help on getting the key into the keyhole. And as you can see, it certainly isn't resistant to scratches. And the door handles are positioned vertically to allow you to easily open the doors, regardless of what you might have in your hands. What could be more natural? Now, while I've got the door open, I want to show you the opening. 
Now you've heard of Chrysler's cab forward design. We call this axle forward. The results are pretty impressive. By moving the front axle and engine forward, we were able to create a wider and lower door opening. Now it's easier than ever for the driver and front passenger to get into the vehicle and have more front leg room too. I'll tell you, Chevy's axle forward design makes it much easier to get in and out of a Chevy van. Now I already told you about the full length frame, so let's work our way up. But first, I want to point out one thing. Our Chevy has an independent short long arm front suspension with coil springs to allow the front wheels to react independently of each other to bumps and other road conditions. The result is stable ride and handling. It also helps reduce front end dive during braking situations. Econoline still has the dated twin I-beam with coil springs. Here in the 90s, I think most customers will prefer the benefits of the short long arm independent front suspension on Chevy. The rear suspension on Chevy van consists of a two-stage multi-leaf spring and low friction spring design to help improve ride control. You might remember we highlighted them in the April release, CK Work Trucks. In a sliding door comparison, Chevy van has a slight advantage in both height and width of its opening. And the door slides on this track, centered mid-level on the vehicle, making it much easier to operate than its predecessor. Oh, and one other thing, the sliding door is optional at no extra cost. Customers can choose whichever door best suits their needs. The 60-40 swing out side door is standard on all models. They open a full 142 degrees to provide an opening 46.7 inches wide and almost 49 inches high. That opening is higher than Econoline or Maxivan. Whether for cargo or passengers, this opening makes it easier getting in and out. Econoline's dimensions are pretty similar. Regardless, with our doors opening 142 degrees, you've got yourselves one darn big opening. The longer wheelbase version has 316.8 cubic feet of cargo room. That's more than Ford Supervan and Dodge Maxi Van. The regular models can accommodate 267 cubic feet of cargo, also more than corresponding Ford or Dodge models. Did you notice anything missing inside, like the spare tire? We've stored it underneath the vehicle to maximize cargo space. However, the spare is easily lowered on a crank down wench should you need it. Okay, guess who is the first manufacturer to place dual airbags in a full size van? Well, Actually, probably wasn't much of a guess because Eden already mentioned the standard dual airbags on Chevy van. All Chevy vans and Express vans at or below 8,600 pounds GVWR are equipped with these dual airbags. Ford Econoline only offers a driver airbag. You know, I've done a lot of these episodes where I talk about the competition having dual airbags when we only had one. It feels good to have this advantage. And while we're talking safety, let's not forget the standard four-wheel ABS on Chevy van. Ford Econoline only has standard rear-wheel ABS, and the optional four-wheel ABS would cost an Econoline customer an extra $610. It's also an extra cost option on Dodge Maxi Van. Chevy van also includes side door beams designed to enhance occupant protection and provide overall structural integrity. And the dual rear panel and side doors feature child safety locks that, when activated, prevents the young ones from inadvertently opening the door while the vehicle is in transit. And you won't find these on Econoline or Dodge Maxi Van. Now, you keep hearing about this next feature from me in every issue. But something this good, well, I have to talk about it. Vortec engines. Your customers are going to be counting on these vans for hauling and towing so they'll appreciate the performance characteristics of the Vortec line of engines. And the new 6.5 liter turbo diesel V8 is available for customers requiring diesel performance. The standard engine for a G2500, the Vortec 4300 V6 with sequential fuel injection, delivering 200 horsepower and 250 foot-pounds of torque. The Econo line is a standard 4.9 liter I6 that offers 145 horsepower. Now, that's with the optional four-speed automatic transmission. That means Vortec has 38% more horsepower. Now, which engine would you want if you're out on the road all day making deliveries? Can you say Vortec? I should point out that this Econo line with the 4.9 engine does have 15 more foot-pounds of torque than what the Vortec 4300 offers in this Chevy van. The truck track handout has a performance comparison chart which shows the engine lineup in greater detail. Okay, let's talk fuel economy. 
That's got to be something important to business owners. I'm sure they'd rather be putting more money in their pocket than in their gas tank. Chevy van with a Vortec 4300 V6 with SFI has an EPA rating of 15 miles per gallon city and 19 highway for a combined rating of 16 miles per gallon. Ford Econoline with its 4.9 liter I6 with EFI engine has an EPA rating of 12 miles per gallon city and 16 highway for a combined rating of 14 miles per gallon. While Econoline has a larger fuel tank, 35 gallons to 31 gallons, Chevy van still has a superior cruising range. So, in our comparison, Chevy van offers better horsepower performance and better fuel economy. That's something Ford salespeople might have a beef about. Finally, Chevy van has a standard four-speed electronically controlled automatic transmission. Econoline only offers a three-speed automatic transmission. Next, I want to show you some of the small appointments that add up to a full-size story. I call these smart thinking features. For instance, all underhood service points are clearly marked and color-coded, making them easier to see and more convenient to reach. The service points in Econoline are marked for identification, but they aren't color-keyed. This is just one of the examples that illustrate the thought that went into bringing Chevy Van to market. This optional front bumper step pad available on Chevy Van ensures sure footing and helps make it easier to clean the windshield or get at roof loaded items like maybe a ladder. And it's not an offering you can get on this Econo line or for that matter on Dodge Maxi Van. To try the same maneuver on Econo line, you'd have to be a high wire specialist. Not something I'd want to try with muddy work boots or a wet bumper. These oversized roof drip rails are larger than its predecessor and run the full length of the vehicle to carry water away from entry doors. They also help anchor aftermarket rooftop accessories. Oh, by the way, that feature is a byproduct of the voice of the customer design. Initially, designers were going to leave them off to reduce wind noise and drag, but the voice of the customer told us that they needed the drip rails to anchor rooftop accessories for business applications. Now, by comparison, Econoline has these smaller rails that probably just don't do the same job. The composite cap panel helps protect paint from damage when you're loading and unloading equipment or tools from the roof rack. Now, that's a nice touch, and it's a touch you can't get on Econoline. This surface is ripe for scratches and damage. This standard entry assist rear bumper design makes it easy to get in and out of the vehicle. Ford has a rear stump bumper for the Econoline, but customers have to pay extra for it check out this low step-in height and it's like that at all entry points of the vehicle. This is just another feature that makes for easy entry and exit of cargo and passengers. From the ground to the top of the rear load floor on Chevy G2500 extended van 27.5. Now that's a feature you can appreciate if you've ever tried to load a heavy or bulky item into the cargo area. The Ford Econoline model has a ground the top of load floor height of 29.6. Let's look at the rear doors. No exposed hinges. They're protected from water and inclement weather. Now that's part of an exclusive design and a little later I'll show you why. The interior walls of the Chevy van have exposed ribs to allow for easy upfitting, like mounting bins and racks or other aftermarket equipment customers may want to install. Lowell and Eden already talked about some of the interior features, like the convenience center console, so I won't detail them. I do want to show you the leg and foot room up front. The reason? The passenger side of the engine cover takes up less space than its predecessor to allow for more leg room. The design team actually came up with two engine covers, the standard size cover and the larger one to accommodate the 7400 and diesel engines. Rather than offer one size engine cover that would be pretty big for some of the Vortec engines, the engineers developed a smaller engine cover to create even more leg room for people, like the one shown in the express van. But in the Econo line, my feet were just too big. Well, <laughs> actually it was the engine cover that was just too big. I didn't have much room for my legs or to get to the rear compartment of the vehicle. Ford touts their exclusive out front design that allows for easy access from the driver's seat to the rear compartment but compared to Chevy van, it might actually be outdated. The instrument panel is ergonomically designed with controls and rotary dials that are easy to operate. 
These passenger assist handles are strategically placed to make it easy for occupants to get in and out of the vehicle. In fact, the handle position on the dashboard is unique to Chevrolet. We'll take a more in-depth look at Chevy Express in a future issue. Okay, let's recap the top five advantages over Econo Line. Number one, swing out side doors. They afford the biggest opening in this segment and open 142 degrees. And customers have the option of choosing a no extra cost sliding door. Second, interior cargo space on the long wheelbase model is 316 cubic feet, more than Ford Supervan and Dodge Maxi Van. And the regular van model also has more cargo capacity than its competitors. Third, dual airbags, standard on Chevy van and Express van for G1500 and 2500 models. Chevy is the first to market with dual airbags in this segment. Fourth, the standard engine on Chevy van has more horsepower than at Ford's competitive offering and has a fuel economy advantage too. Fifth, the rear doors with no exposed hinges and wide opening doors, it's clearly an open and shut case. From Eastern Market, I hope my comparisons help the salespeople in their market. Thanks, Pete. You know, Pete's review really demonstrated just how much thought went into the redesign of the full-size vans. You know, every feature you see on the full-size van is there for a reason. And for more on that, Pete met with the brand manager for Chevy Van and Chevy Express. Let's take a look. Thanks, Lowell. And you know something? You're right. The design philosophy that went into creating the Chevy Van and Chevy Express Van covered literally everything. And here to tell us more about it is John Gaydash, brand manager for these full-size vans. John, thanks for taking time with Truck Track today. Absolutely, no problem. You know, it feels a little bit more like the November issue than it does May. Yeah, it's a little cool out. You know, John, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the design philosophy that went into these vehicles. We took a no compromise approach on the vehicle. We, we really wanted to make sure we got the, the voice of the customer and that was a very difficult thing to do, recognizing that we have so many different customer needs to meet. Uh, the vehicle segment is uh, split between retail and commercial and then commercial is further split between uh, upfit, cargo, uh, and conversion vans. So we really needed to make sure that we got all of the input from all of the customers and in the process didn't compromise any of the needs of any of the customers. You know, I noticed the G-Van has dual airbags, so would that be another good example of customer-oriented thinking? Absolutely. Uh, specifically to the conversion van customer, that customer absolutely requires safety uh, in their product, so we put the dual airbags in specifically for them, but in the process of doing that, we found out that the commercial customer saw that as an advantage as well. So we really think that we have a competitive advantage in the marketplace, at least in the short term, as it relates to having dual airbags. Now, earlier you mentioned that you took a no trade-offs approach to the design of these vehicles. I was wondering if you could embellish on that. A, a good example is uh, the full frame of the vehicle. As you know, the uh, previous generation G-Van was a unibody construction vehicle, and we spent a lot of time initially talking about whether or not we should have full frame or unibody. Unibody gives you lighter weight, lower cost, but the full frame gives you the capabilities, especially in the commercial market, to have higher GVWs. So we decided to go with the full frame, even though it was going to cost us more money, even though it was going to increase, increase the weight of the vehicle, because we knew that that gave us the ability to meet those customers' needs. The benefit for the passenger side of the business was that we found that that full frame, when engineered appropriately, gave us a better ride and handling for those customers as well, so it was a win-win. What are the future expectations of the Chevy van and Chevy Express van? Could you tell us about that? Yes, absolutely. We've got an uh, outstanding product here, as you well know, and we think we've got some competitive advantages, long-term sustainable competitive advantages that are really going to give us an advantage in the marketplace. Specifically, the rear doors and the side door are the biggest uh, openings in the, in the industry. We have more front and leg room than the competition. These are all features that the competition are not going to be able to duplicate in the short term. So we think we've got some real advantages there. In addition, we're already working on enhancements for 97, 97 and 99 to keep this the number one full-size van in the marketplace. Well, John, you're looking a little cold, so we'll wrap this up. Thanks okay, for Pete. taking time Thank with you. Truck Check. Let's go get Appreciate it. Appreciate <laughs> Thanks, Pete. You know, it's interesting to get some insight from the brand managers. I'm sure we'll be talking to them more in the future. Moving on, Eden has this month's focus on TCE. Lowell, pretty much everyone knows that when you buy a new car or truck from Chevrolet, you benefit from genuine customer care, which includes the three-year, 36,000-mile limited warranty, courtesy transportation, and roadside assistance. 
But what many customers don't know is that roadside basic care is available for as long as they own their vehicle. It's available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Ongoing assistance is something you can't get from the competition. Their roadside assistance programs cease as soon as the warranty expires. One other point about genuine customer care that Chevy van owners will appreciate is that the bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty also includes tires. Competitive vehicle manufacturers require owners to deal separately with the tire manufacturers if there's a defect problem. Business owners will appreciate the good business sense of Chevy truck, knowing that we're helping them get back on the road as soon as possible should they have a problem. Lowell, that's the focus on TCE for this month. Thank you, Eden. You know, some business owners spend much of their time on the road getting from job to job, so that information can be a handy tip. And speaking of tip, it's time for Toco's Tip. I know you're probably thinking, Toco didn't even talk about the rear doors at great length, but that's my tip for the month. An exclusive design allows them to open up wide, really wide. In fact, they open significantly wider than Ford Econoline or Dodge Ram van. But first things first, when opened 90 degrees, Chevy doors don't diminish cargo width. Their design allows for ample shoulder room when loading and unloading bulky items that require two people. Ford and Dodge doors intrude into the loading space, which can be a pretty tight squeeze. Okay, back it up. Now here's something I wouldn't try with Econoline. With the doors in their full open position, the rear bumper extends past the doors, allowing drivers to back up flush to delivery doors and docks. If Econoline tried this, things might come to a crashing halt. I think you better stop right there. Second, the width of the rear door opening allows for easy loading and unloading of bulky items, including standard size pallets. I guess customers will find this Chevy feature very palatable. 165 degrees, no pins, no clips to remove or unlatch. That's a great idea and one customers will find to be very helpful. Of course, there are standard detents which allow customers to just open the doors 90 degrees should they desire. Even with the doors open all the way, the rear stop lamps are still visible to oncoming traffic. Now that's comforting to customers who might be working on the side of the road. And one last thing. Ford makes you unhook this grease-covered latch on each door to open them as wide as Chevy. Now it seems to me like that could be quite a messy inconvenience for customers, especially when they're on the job. But hey, you know, I could be wrong. Maybe they'll eventually change the way these doors work to save face. The exclusive design of the rear doors and its many benefits. That's Toko's tip. Lowell, Eden, that closes things from here. Back to you. Thanks, Pete. Our event coverage this month takes a look at the recent immersion waves that were held at the Wentzville plant in Missouri, where the Chevy van and Chevy Express are manufactured. That's right, Lowell. Actually, the immersion consisted of three waves, conversion partners, retail, and wholesale. Hosted by the full-size van brand team, the immersion included a factory tour with stops at each assembly point a classroom session for participants to brush up on Chevy Van and Chevy Express knowledge, and a ride and drive. You know, many of the participants thought the ride and drive was the highlight. Rather than a run-of-the-mill ride and drive through a parking lot, this one took participants on a 90-minute course with a fully loaded vehicle. The ride and drive also included competitive vehicles for comparison. Throughout the session, the focus was on quality. In fact, Chevy Van and Chevy Express are subjected to a series of water and squeak tests as well as a programmed course that mimics various road conditions around the world. The Chevy Van Chevy Express Immersion is the first communications event between the newly structured brand teams and wholesale and retail Chevy team members. And by all accounts, it's the start of something good. That's the news from Wentzville. And news is the subject of our last segment. In breaking news, we've got some up-to-date info on the new Venture minivan due out for the 97 model year. Preliminary information regarding Venture suggests that its standard engine will have an advantage over the competition. The standard offering from Venture minivan is the 3400 V6 engine, expected to provide fast acceleration for freeway entry and during maximum gross vehicle weight driving. We'll keep you posted, and you can look for more information in future truck track issues. We also would like to welcome the new general manager of Chevrolet, John Middlebrook. 
His name might be familiar to some of you. He was general manager at Pontiac before assuming the post at Chevrolet. And we'd like to say goodbye and good luck to Jim Perkins, who officially retired on May 1st. Enjoy your retirement. Well, it's time for us to retire this issue of Truck Track. Next month, we'll take a look at Chevy S-Series pickup and see how it stacks up against the competition. For Eden, Pete, and myself, we'll see you next time on Truck Track.